So uh, that last room was about conference rooms, conference rooms where we were improving the experience for the near end. This room is kind of the opposite. No, oh, let me kick that. This room is the opposite. We're caring about the far end experience. How can we improve that? Specifically in this case, in a lecture hall environment. I'm a professor. I'm walking around on my stage, professing things very important to you. You are my students, my students in my raked audience here in the auditorium. Uh, now, if you're like me, you had to actually go to school when you went to school. You had to go and put your physical but in a physical chair, in a physical room, in a physical university. Uh, these days, people have it a little bit easier. Uh, you can do a lot of learning remotely, and a lot of universities are supporting both in-room participants and a hybrid experience with those distance learners. But those two experiences are not equitable because people in the room kind of have an advantage, right? Because you can see me, you can interact with me, you can see what I'm working on. If there's an audience member, you can turn around and talk to them. Audience members can talk to each other, facilitate discussions. That's way better than what you normally get remotely, because remotely you're normally gonna get maybe a wide shot of the stage, and at best maybe a secondary camera of the document camera that the, the instructor has to manually toggle back and forth between. That's not a great learning experience. I'm gonna tell you about the cameras in the room. I got five cameras in this room. I got two up here, I got two in the back, and I got one in the corner. Five cameras seems like an awful lot for this room, right? Looking at this screen, I'm carouseling through those five camera feeds, just so you can see what they look like. This isn't useful, this is just so you can see what the actual cameras are seeing. This is the one we care about. This is what we're sending to that far end. Like I said, it's all the way pulled out, wide shot of the stage. It has to be, because you don't know where I'm gonna be walking, right? And if you're looking at that for over an hour, you're probably tuning out and you're not learning very well. So now we're going to improve things by getting the audience involved as part of the conversation. That we're doing with our audience switching. Audience switching enabled. So keep your eye on this far end signal while our audience asks the question. I'm an audience member and when I begin to speak, uh, the microphone is delivering proximity data to QSIS and telling QSIS to switch to this camera. Right, that microphone right above you. It knows which direction it heard audio in. So we decided to light up a light that is aimed in that general direction and pull up a camera that's aimed in that general direction. I can do the same thing if I'm another audience member over here. I ask a question over on this side, same thing. I got a light that's on me. I got another angle that shows up and aims at me. Uh, now, if Patrick all of a sudden interrupts me, I want you to watch what happens on the screen. Excuse me, I have another annoying question for you, Professor McGarrick. Yes, I don't care about your question because I'm gonna answer a different one. Did you notice that it just cut straight over to him? We didn't see the camera go that's because we have two cameras right here. One camera finds the first person who's talking, freeing up the second camera to locate the next person that is going to be called upon. That way when someone starts talking, the new camera finds them, and when it's ready, it cuts to that location. Rather than have that camera move and sweep, and the far end is getting motion sickness by watching this, and now they're vomiting into their laptop, and now they can't even use the laptop because they close it and it splatters on them. It's terrible for everyone. So that's a better experience, right? And explains why we have two cameras in the front. But that shot was not very good. Nobody's winning a cinematography award for that shot. You saw the shot of Patrick. He's like in the corner of it and it's really wide. We have to leave it wide. We have to, we don't know where someone's gonna be standing. We aim a camera in that general direction that we wanna cover in. But then we can engage auto framing to get it tighter. Auto framing enabled. This time when Patrick talks, take a look at the difference in the shot. When I begin to speak again, uh, you'll notice that it's a lot tighter and it allows me to be a human. So if I do a little bit of this, maybe I sway over here a little bit, the camera will pan and scan over and get me right in the center. And if a second face gets in there, Cusa says, oh, two faces, cool, I'll put you in frame. It's gonna find the number of faces in the shot and always compensate, right? Uh, so that's the way we, we set up a nice shot so we can always cover whoever's talking for those, those shorter questions and, and interruptions and things like that. However, I will say that you saw the way that that was kind of you know, panning and scanning in there uh, was not the thing I would wanna use for a presenter. A presenter needs more natural fluid movement of the camera in order to watch them in the room. So for that, we're going to use our AI-driven intelligent presenter tracking. Presenter tracking enabled. You can already see that zoom in was much smoother, much more natural than what we had when I jumped into the frame over there. And as I walk around the stage now, the camera movement that tracks me is just so much more natural. It feels like an actual human that's guiding that camera with its own motions. And I can go anywhere I want. This is what's happening under the hood. So we got one camera that's doing the pan tilt zoom that's delivering it to the far end of those two in the back. The other one is fully zoomed out 
watching the room at all times. And it's analyzing what's on the stage. In this big green presenter area, it has incorrectly identified me as a human. It thinks I'm a human, it has no idea that I'm a robot. It's actually telling me I got a 92% likeliness of being a human, that's pretty good. That's, that's better than my ex-wife ever would have told me. Uh, in the front row, you are 70% likely to be a human. Man, whew, that's a weird way to find that out here at the trade show. Uh, but we got this information, we can do things with it. For instance, A, you can see it's building a skeleton of my entire body. It's not just facial recognition. I could turn around, walk around this way. It's still gonna keep on tracking me. I could leave the stage and come back and it'll remember that it's me and that I'm the important one. With that information, you can do all kinds of things. If I walk into the purple area over there, we can trigger an event based purely on my proximity. Ah, the stage has dimmed. The focus is now on the whiteboard. And now we're using that fifth camera I talked about earlier. Fifth camera is permanently focused on the whiteboard because we know that this is the thing that the foreign caller has to care about right now. It doesn't want to track me anymore. I'm not important. That's the thing they need to be able to be legible, right? I leave that area. It swaps back to our normal presenter tracking. And while we're doing presenter tracking, we can still use the audience switching we used earlier. That's right, They're, you're not making a choice between the two. They, of course, they work collectively. When I start talking, it's back to audience switching. And when Nate starts talking, back to presenter track. Which is one of the reasons why uh, all of Vision Suite happens to be Microsoft Teams certified. Uh, you can't quite read it because it's behind the cameraman, but it's nice to know. Uh, is there anything else you may have noticed within this room? These blue lights following me wherever I go. Is that useful? No. Is it cool? Yes. Why wouldn't we do something with data if we have the data, right? We've got this information about where I'm at in the room in the camera, do something cool with it. This makes the room just a little bit more interesting. And that makes the people a little bit more engaged and more memorable. Why wouldn't we make it so that everywhere I go, I, I'm, I'm glowing and I'm highlighted in the room. You can make it so that areas of the room punish someone if they go somewhere they shouldn't go. Attention presenter. Yeah, that's me. You're blocking the display. I, I, yeah, but I did that on purpose. Please stop being terrible and move oh, to one side. That was needlessly harsh. Thank you. Thank you. So we've made a much more equitable experience for the far end, and we've got these amazing triggers we can have in the room based on our location. And most importantly, it's automated. We don't have to waste some AV intern's life sitting in the back of this lecture hall just to change cameras every now and then, right? This can all happen magically by, oh, I ran out of time by like two seconds. All right, we're done in here, and they're kicking me out. They're playing my Oscar music.